Coast Pines right here on FanDuel TV. Of course, on the Ringer Gambling Show. The boys are ready to rock as we have a whole lot of NFL football to discuss. We welcome in Joe House, Raheem Palmer, yours truly, J.J. John Jastrzemski, as we start planting seed for week nine across the board in the NFL. We will get to the right line of the year in the NFL. I don't think there's any other way to describe it between the two and six Jets being favored against the six and two Houston Texans. We have some thoughts. We have some takes on that. But a couple of news and notes that I want to hit right out of the gate before we start diving into these games. House, we talked about this on Monday. The Indianapolis Colts were not a serious team with Anthony Richardson at quarterback. Well, we do our Monday pod later in the day, or maybe it was Tuesday. I'm losing track of the days. Whenever it was, we find out from Shane Steichen, Richardson out, Flacco in, Colts abandoning long-term development. And you know what, House? I don't blame him because Anthony Richardson is never going to be the guy. He just doesn't have it. It will not develop. It will not happen. And I think Steichen is looking at his locker room and saying, I don't want to lose the fellas. I want to make the postseason. I think this has me far more willing, whether it's this Sunday or in the weeks ahead, to find myself backing the Indianapolis Colts. What do you say, Joe House? I mean, for sure. You have to take the Colts seriously now with Flacco at quarterback. They're going from the absolute bottom-ranked quarterback at the uh, uh, completion over percentage and and, uh, EPA combo up to the seventh-ranked. Now, I know small uh, sample size, but... We saw the run that Flacco uh, accomplished last year with the Browns, and there's no reason. This Colts team is good. They are getting healthy on defense finally. They have a top five um, run blocking unit on offense. They can establish the run, and they have good weapons outside. I'm not ready just for editorial purposes to cross off the career of Anthony Richardson, but the pause feels right. And I do think there, you know, the guy needs reps that are not game time reps. I mean, I I understand the experiment that the Colts uh, uh, attempted here, but your observation, JJ has to be the right one. Something going on inside that locker room ownership, looking at it and saying, look, we're, we're, we're a pretty damn good team. And we're sitting right there. The market agrees. We looked at this on Monday uh, forecasting potential teams that could, could make the playoffs. The Colts are, are are right there with two or three other teams as potential candidates to make the playoffs. So um, I, I actually think it's a pretty good job by the Colts stream. So this is complicated because we know Richardson is completing just 44% of his passes this season. Dead last in the NFL. He's 27th in EPA per play, 32nd in success rate. However, I think there's a caveat to that. And I think with Richardson in the lineup, it makes the Colts a little bit more dangerous in terms of their running game, pairing him up with Jonathan Taylor. And, you know, one of the things that he's actually been, he's done well on is in early downs. And if you look at Joe Flacco right now, he's playing unsustainably well on late downs. And if that comes down to earth, I think the Colts are going to be in a world of hurt. Now, when it comes to the particular matchup against the Minnesota Vikings, we saw two straight matchups where the Minnesota Vikings, they played the Rams and they played, who did they play? Fuck. Um, yeah, they played Detroit. All right, you look at the Minnesota Vikings. We saw two straight matchups where the Minnesota Vikings, they played the Rams and they played Detroit. And they had veteran quarterbacks who were able to dominate the blitz and Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford. Well, Joe Flacco should be able to have experience and dominate the blitz in the same manner. So I do think for this particular matchup, it's probably a great move. So um, I'm not saying I'm going to be on the Colts, but I think you're going to see a lot of sharp money on the Colts, given the light of what we saw the last couple of weeks. No question about it. Now, I want to get to a trade that was made involving Deontay Johnson. Leaves witness protection in Carolina, finds himself in Baltimore. and. It's always fascinating when you get a former Steeler who goes to the Ravens. You got Patrick Queen, a former Raven with the Steelers. So, Raheem, I always love that sort of angle. I have to admit, though, I'm a little bit surprised this is where Deontay Johnson ended up because 
just connecting the dots, I figured the minute we got the word that Stephon Diggs was done for the year for the Houston Texans and the fact that they're still waiting on Nico Collins to come back, kind of thought Deontay Johnson was going to find his way with C.J. Stroud and the Texans, but he ends up with the Ravens. So that move as a whole. Move the needle, not so much moving the needle. I think it moves the needle for a small percentage. I think right now we know the biggest issue with the Baltimore Ravens is that they can't stop anybody. And that secondary is, I mean, it's, it's abysmal right now. Like, that's the biggest issue with the Ravens. However, when I look at the Baltimore Ravens over the last four or five years during the Lamar Jackson era, one of the biggest excuses was this team doesn't have any weapons. Well, this year they have Zay Flowers. They have Isaiah Likely. They have Mark Andrews. You have Nelson Aguilar. You have Derrick Henry. And now you add Deontay Johnson to that, you know, that pool of weapons. I think it makes the Baltimore Ravens scary. And look, we know that they're, I mean, right now, they have the best offense in the NFL. And we know that they're going to be able to score points, and they're going to have to score points. So I'm, I'm not mad at the move at all. If you ask me, I think Lamar Jackson has no excuses. Last year, the Baltimore Ravens had a dream season. They had the best defense in the NFL. They were probably one of the best NFL teams of all time. And they held Patrick Mahomes to zero points in the second half. And the Ravens couldn't score. Well, now you have no excuses. Lamar Jackson, go out there, put up some points, when it matters in the postseason. I love it, Dream. Um, I do think that this is additive. How can you reach any other conclusion? It continues to be the case with Baltimore. For whatever weird reason, it doesn't kind of doesn't matter. They always have a case of the dropsies. They always have guys dropping catchable balls. It has plagued Lamar Jackson kind of throughout his whole career in Baltimore. I don't know what the explanation is. Um, but Johnson is a vertical threat. Like, you know, the two or three times that, that he and, and, uh, the red rifle got it going, you know, there was a, a, a real connection there and Lamar Jackson and, and the red rifle rifle, you don't need me to tell you are two different uh, propositions altogether, but you know, anything that would, that makes this, uh, that advances this Ravens offense is to the good because to dreams point, they can't stop anybody. They only this season, they're going to have to win games by outscoring teams, JJ. Yeah, and I'm glad that you guys kind of transition this into what the Ravens can do from an offensive standpoint and what they're not doing from a defensive standpoint. House, I know it's very early, but we're kind of at a point where we're starting to hit that halfway point. We know Kansas City's top dog. Until they get knocked off by somebody in the AFC, they're the favorite until you see otherwise. But halfway through this year, to me, there's two main contenders that are ready to maybe duke it out with the Chiefs. Buffalo, who's going to play them in a couple of weeks and what's going to be a game of the year candidate in the NFL. And we saw Baltimore take on the Chiefs and lost a game by literally mere inches in the first kickoff game of the season. Right now, House, bigger threat to the Chiefs. Buffalo, Baltimore. It's definitely Buffalo in, in my uh, estimation and opinion because really for all of Josh Allen's career as, as the bills, you know, got the weapons around him, they have been built to defeat the chiefs. They just haven't been able to get there. And they are every year, a play or two away from, 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 from getting there. I I'm, we have to see one Lamar uh, playoff game. I mean, the regular season's a different animal. We need to see it one time from Lamar uh, under circumstances where it's the highest leverage and the highest kind of impact situation. We still have, we don't have a signature Lamar playoff game. Um, so to me, it's, it's, it's the Buffalo bills, the way they're built, they are mano a mano. They can, they can absolutely slug it out with the chiefs. Um, and it always comes down to one or two plays dream. So this is tough for me just because like the Baltimore Ravens to me, I, I think they're the cream of the crop. And, I like what the Ravens have done to elite competition. Now, the Buffalo Bills, it feels like they've been beaten up on bottom feeders this year. And we saw what the Bills, how they struggled against the Ravens in that game. So I do believe that the Ravens are the better team. But like House said, I mean, Lamar Jackson has basically been the James Harden of the NFL. 
he can dominate these regular seasons. But Aaron Judge, like, I thought you were going to go there, Raheem. The Aaron Judge, <laughs> oh. I thought you were going to put oh, you, that you know, one you know to I'm the an table. NBA guy. I didn't, I didn't want to take shots at, <laughs> at Aaron Judge. As you see me sitting with the Yankee hat and the Yankee <laughs> shirt on, you didn't want to go there. I get it. I get it. I, I didn't want to go there. And then, I mean, of course, by the time you guys are watching this on FanDuel TV, Aaron Judge might have, have done something already. Um, so From your lips wanna... to God's ears, bro. Please, <laughs> will that into existence. Yeah, but I mean, how's hit the nail on the head? Lamar's got to prove it in the postseason. We've seen Josh Allen have the Kansas City Chiefs on the ropes before Mahomes, you know, pulled a rabbit out of a hat and scored within 13 seconds. So it's definitely the Bills. So I, I get that point, House, because I'm right there with you when it comes to Allen in big games, in big spots. I have more confidence in him than I do in Lamar Jackson. And I know some people are going to say, hold on a second, JJ. Josh Allen has never won an MVP. And Josh Allen hasn't been to and hasn't gotten to a Super Bowl. But I've seen elite playoff performances from him, even in losing efforts. I have not felt the exact same way regarding Lamar Jackson. Now, my pushback would be House. From a coaching standpoint, I have much more confidence in John Harbaugh and the Baltimore Ravens staff than I do Sean McDermott and the Bills staff. And that, do, to me, would be my you? pushback. I do, do you? Yes. Last, yes. I mean, let, let me yes. remind you of what transpired last season. <laughs> let me I, remind you. It wasn't even 12 months ago, buddy. I can't argue that. But I have seen John Horball take a team and win a Super Bowl, right? Like, I, I, I've i seen that. I've seen Sean McDermott screw up multiple playoff games and never get there. You know what I mean? So, I'm weighing the two coaching staffs, right? I trust Horball more than I trust McDermott. You see See where I'm going there, Raheem? And I, yeah, I trust I Allen more than I trust Jackson, 100%. And, but I'm going to give the Ravens eat. coaching staff the edge. And, you know, another underrated thing with this is, you know, kicking. I think kicking matters so much in the postseason. And while Justin Tucker hasn't been the same, we know he's a better kicker than what they have there in Buffalo. It's amazing that Tyler Bass has still been hanging around, hanging around, hanging around after he missed a game-tying field goal last year in the divisional round. And he's had a couple of shanks like me on the first tee at Silver Lake. I think we all know what that – I haven't played much, House. That's why. The, the game is not where it needs to be. Yankee fever, Met fever is kind of distracting me a little bit. But, yeah, that kicking edge for Buffalo – no, it's not there. Baltimore would have it. All right, we got a lot more coming your way. This loaded edition of East Coast Bias. When we come back, Thursday night, Halloween in East Rutherford, New Jersey. And, you know, East Rutherford, New Jersey, that's where uh, Clemenza and the Godfather boys might have disposed to some income, uh, if you know what I'm saying. Well, I don't know if there are any rats around East Rutherford, but there's one that's in the stadium at MetLife. That is the rat of all rats. We'll get to that line, why it makes no sense, and why I'm going to hate myself for what I'm about to say. All that more. It's coming up right after this. All right, boys. Rat line of the year. We talked about it on Monday. I wondered if it would change. I wondered if it would move. It hasn't. The 6-2 and two Houston Texans, who I faded last week properly, who have been incredibly lucky and fortunate. There's no getting around that. The 6-2 and two Texans are getting points, Raheem, against the dysfunctional, toxic, nightmarish New York Jets. Now, I have been on the Jets on a couple of different occasions this year. And I have to be honest, it has not gone well for me. I took the Jets uh, against the Minnesota Vikings in London. A loser. I took the Jets on Monday night against Buffalo. A loser. I'll keep it going. Sunday night. Raheem was with me on this because he gave it out on the Ringer Sunday pregame. Took the Jets. Playing the points against the Steelers. Loser. Raheem, I can't believe I'm about to say what I'm about to say. I'm taking the Jets tonight. And it has everything to do with the fact that the Texans are down two receivers. That's number one. And I have to trust the number on this. Six and two, getting points against two and six. To me, that's like an automatic play. I'm just going to blindly do it. I'm going to trust the number. I'm going to kind of trust the science. And if I get burned, I get burned by a square line. Do you see where I'm coming from, Dream? I'm on the Jets, and I can't justify it any other way. A hundred. 100% see where you're coming from. And the big reason why is because this Texans team is completely fraudulent. You're talking about a team that's 6-2 and two with a plus-nine point differential. They're performing like a team that should have won 
four games or so. Meanwhile, you look at the New York Jets. They're two and six, and they're performing like a team that probably should have won three and a half, four games. So these are evenly matched teams. You give the, the Jets points for home field advantage, and then you look at the fact that Nico Collins is out. And we know that this is a receiver's league. And when you don't have your number one receiver, you take a huge step back. Then you lose Stephon Diggs. You look at the fact that this team right now, the Houston Texans, are 25th in success rate on offense. Guess who's better than the Houston Texans on offense in terms of success rate? The Las Vegas Raiders, the New York Giants, the, the Saints, the Cowboys. I mean, just downright bad teams. So that's how poorly this Houston Texans team play, is playing. And C.J. Stroud has just been able to pull a rabbit out of a hat, make big plays on third down here and there, and that's how they're winning these games. Well, the New York Jets are the better team, but they're underperforming. They're at home. It's a short week. I agree with you. I like the New York Jets. Now, if I want to bet it, that's another question, but I think you, this is Jets or pass. Yes, I totally agree with that assessment dream. I uh, absolutely concur with the idea that the number is um, supportive of the Jets. Um, that's the only side to play here. Unfortunately, I have implemented a never bet the Jets, never bet the Jets policy for the rest of the season for as long as their, their head coaches uh, continue to be doofus number one and doofus number two, as long as the, the dingbat uh, quarterback, 40 year old, um, you know, drug consumer, uh, darkness and lightness uh, savant is the quarterback. I am out on this garbage football team. I will say this. They did finally put the bum kicker on the, on the injured reserve. They have two kickers in this week. We'll see who wins out the kicker competition. Their bum kicker costs them three games already this season to go along with their darkness and light 40 year old drug consuming quarterback who threw six interceptions over three games. But I can't possibly endorse betting on the Jets, even though they are the right side. Houston, terrible spot for them. Not only coming off of really the, the, the game that's going to decide the AFC South on Sunday against a tough uh, Indianapolis Colts team, but also four games in 19 days. That's what the Colts have. It's a, it's a tough, tough spot. We saw last season um, Houston going into New York uh, it was CJ Stroud's worst game as a professional 10 for 23 uh, uh, as a, as a passer, he got hurt. Um, so it's a, it's a stay away for sure. I'm going to play the under in this game. The total's 42 and a half. <laughs> the bum jets acquired all this talent at the offensive line that can't do anything. They can't establish the run and they can't protect the quarterback. New England's uh, defense was remarking after their victory against the Jets, how immobile Aaron Rodgers is. So I, I think that the Joe Mixon emergence for the Texans, that is their best shot at establishing any kind of offense. And then on the other side of the ball, I don't have any confidence in the Jets putting up any points. They haven't done it all season long. It's an under 42 and a half play for me, gents. So I like that under house. I think that's correlated well. Uh, obviously, some wacky stuff could get in the way of that. But Houston, C.J. Stroud has not been the same quarterback on the road. C.J. Stroud, I'm glad that you pointed this out, lost last year and got knocked out of the game uh, when they played at the Meadowlands last season when Zach Wilson had maybe the best game he has ever had as a professional in knocking out the Houston Texans in December, what, 2023. I think Houston's avenue, Raheem, to win this game is going to be ball control, run the ball, and hope that their defensive line can go and wreak havoc and get to Aaron Rodgers. I think it does play an under. I do. I, I side with House on that. Um, one thing I want to say, too, from a Jet standpoint, and I understand their coaching staff was a lot to be desired and uh, not in love with anything that I've seen from the Jets. How can you be? I do like the fact, though, Dream, this is the second time they're playing on Thursday night this year, and it's the second time they're playing Thursday night at home. Remember the way? Last time they played a Thursday night game, they played the Patriots. Smoked them. I know it's the Patriots. I know it feels like a lifetime ago. But do you think that's an element, having that second Thursday night game in about seven weeks? Do you think that gives them a leg up? 
Yeah, I definitely think it gives them a leg up. I mean, I think the biggest thing is that they're home on a short week. And I think that's always an advantage. Like anytime you're home for Thursday night football, the other team has to travel. I just think you have a huge leg up. So I agree with that assessment. Okay. Now, House gave out the total. I'm pointing to Jets and holding my nose. Where do you stand on the total of this game? Is this an underside to you? So I'm looking at my model right now. I actually have this at 41. So I think I would lean the same direction. I'm not personally playing anything on it, but I would lean towards the under just based on my model. Um, I mean, I think it's pretty much right on the number. I'm, you're talking about 41 and a half. So um, it's really no play for me, but I guess I would go under. Um, but I, I would really lean towards the Jets. I think that's the strongest play here. But um, I think I'm with House. I'm I'm not betting the Jets. After that game against the Steelers where, you know, they were up 15 to 6 and completely collapsed, like I need to see something from this team before I start backing them. See, I totally get it. Listen, too much Jet PTSD from what they've done all year. But, you know, House, I can't think of a more bizarre line than what we've had all year. Like, six and, uh, two and six teams are not favored against six and two teams. It doesn't happen, especially a team like the Texans that, yes, has been fortunate and lucky, but, like, they, they had a lot of pedigree and hope coming into the year, you know? Like, I, I was very, very surprised with this line. Very it's, surprised. It's the correct line. There's no arguing it. The math supports it. Dream went through the Pythagorean on it. Um, it's There's no question that it's it's the the right line, um, as, as stark as it seems on its face. And that's why, Raheem, it's a perfect example of why these algorithms, when these odds makers over FanDuel and, you know, the guys out in the desert that are coming out with these lines on Sunday – they're not just looking at win-loss record and saying, hey, this is how we, you know, formulate the line. They're looking at so many different math metrics and all sorts of crazy nonsense. That's the method to their science. You know what I mean, dude? Yeah, and it's so interesting because if you look at net EPA per play, these teams are dead even, like dead even. Just, I mean, net EPA per play, meaning defensive EPA per play um, minus, you know, offensive EPA, EPA per play. They're dead even. So. Um, that tells you why this line is where it is. And when you add, you factor in home field advantage, you factor in the injuries, you factor in the fact that the Jets, I mean, the Texans have to travel. There's a reason why they're favored here. Gang, do yourself a favor. Hold your nose, hold tight, and bet the Jets. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I proclaimed I would be done with the Miami Dolphins after last week. Um, I definitely have proclaimed that I was done with the Jets on a variety of different occasions. And, they're just like the bad apple that keeps finding its way back you, in the you bag. You know the thing I'm struggling with is that this year, there's more bad teams than we've ever seen in Oh, in, Raheem, in it's insane. How many, here's the better question. How many good teams are there, right? I have three teams from the AFC in my top ten. Buffalo, Baltimore, and KC. Yeah. And then, I mean, maybe you could include the Steelers, but the jury is still out on the Steelers. Oh, I'm, I'm still not there with the Steelers. Mm -hmm. We didn't even mention that on Monday Night House. I don't regret my giant pick as crummy as they are. And I know Daniel Jones is the classic good enough to lose quarterback. The Steelers, we talked about the soft schedule and how it's going to get tough. I feel like that reckoning is coming at some point in time for them house. It's got well, we, we did in the preseason circle this moment on the schedule, on the calendar as the time to take a look at uh, playoff odds and consider uh, betting against the Steelers to make the playoffs. I mean, we, we sat down and mapped out the schedule and tried to, to, you know, now when we did this in the summer, we anticipated that the AFC uh, North was going to be a little more competitive. We thought we were going to see a little bit more life out of the Cincinnati Bengals. We thought that uh, the Browns would be capable of, you know, 50-50 football. We didn't anticipate both of them to be stinkers, but right now on FanDuel, if you believe that those division games that the Steelers have over the balance of their schedule uh, are, are going to be knocked down, drag out, if you have the, the balls to do so, the Steelers to miss the playoffs is plus 340 right now. I saw that. Juicy. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, we, we, we talked about it as, as, a, as, as a potential way to play the, the, this season. I haven't really lost my enthusiasm for it. I think I, might, I still might dabble a little bit on it. 
Dream, can you see that reckoning coming for the Steelers or is the AFC being as weak as it is opening the door for them just to kind of slide their way in? So the problem with this one is that they're six and two. And you look at the AFC being so weak. Realistically, how many more wins do they need to make the postseason? And, you know, like Mike Tomlin teams, they don't totally collapse. Like if this were a different coach, you know, I could say, you know what, all right, there's a real collapse potential, but there's not a real collapse potential. I think they could easily still, you know, they could split with Cincinnati. They could split with the Ravens. They could split with, you know, the Browns. They could split with all of those, and that might get them into the postseason. So it's very hard for me to make this bet knowing they just they just don't collapse. Now, I think the interesting thing is that if you look on FanDuel Sportsbook right now, they have these adjusted win totals. The Steelers are 6-2, and two, but the adjusted win total is 9.5 games, and they still have like 10 games left. Like, so it's just, it tells you how much sharper these books are getting because, like, at 6-2, and two, you would expect this line to be 11 or so, and it's not that. So it's, it's very frustrating. I don't, I don't know if there's a bet here. I think the way to approach it is just to, you know, fade Pittsburgh game by game and pick your spots. Boys, when we return, we'll start breaking down the week nine card. And the matchup of the week kind of has this what if factor because we're trying to figure out what's going on with the Packers the quarterback. Uh, we have a very interesting battle between two teams that could go either way in the NFC that I know Raheem has a take on because we discussed it on Monday on our East Coast Bias show. But we got a lot of games to handicap. Let's get to it when we return right after this. All right, boys, welcome back. Let's get to the week nine card. You know how this Detroit Green Bay game should be so juicy on so many different fronts. But there is this kind of what if factor as you see the Lions at the moment favored by three and a half points. Jordan Love gets beat up in the game against Jacksonville last Sunday. We see Malik Willis come in, play well, might I add, lead his team to victory and give Matt LaFleur a lot of credit because when Malik Willis has come in, they have not missed a beat. They have still found ways to go and win football games. But as far as what this line is going to be, you know, I, I would have wanted to maybe get on board with the Packers. And now I'm kind of like, do I want to? What's going on at quarterback? Like, it's giving me this pause and this hesitation for, hey, this is what I'm going to revisit once I get some clarity on what they're going to do. I think the line's kind of going to indicate that as such, right? Yeah, there's a full two to two and a half points built into this line that reflects the notion that Malik Willis will be the starting quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Because if it's not, if if the reports as uh, Thursday into Friday into Saturday are that love has progressed enough that he looks good, that he's, he's, he's mobile. Then I, I think green Bay, um, you know, will, will, Detroit will still be favored, but it'll be two or maybe even less than two um, would be my, my guesstimate. Before we go into that game, I just want to go on the record with something. It's very important to me. I'm not telling anybody to bet on the Pittsburgh Steelers to miss the playoffs. I just want to be on the record with that. We talked about it in the summer. It was a good moment to observe it. I just, I just want to be out there it making was time clear. To bring it full circle. It was no, an interesting I mean, yeah. conversation. It was but time this, to bring it full circle. That, if you right. listen to the show every week and you watch every week, you know exactly what we're referencing. House, come on yes, now. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, this Detroit situation. Speaking of uh, bringing it full circle, Jared Goff's. First outdoor game of the season. How is that possible? How, how could, in this modern age of, of modern football, the first game for Jared Goff outdoors, the weather forecast has some stuff in it, and we will pay close attention to uh, how that sort of evolves between now and in, into Sunday. But golf outside, weather forecast with stuff in it. Matt LaFleur as an underdog at home has been terrific. The side right now is Green Bay. And Malik Willis was a very able steward of that offense. He had he has very high efficiency because LaFleur cooked up a game plan, at, you know, against lesser talent for sure, against a, a, a busted up Colts defense and against uh, uh, a, a, a Titans team that wasn't prepared for, for all of the running that uh, Green Bay was able to pull off. 
Um, but I think that that uh, Green Bay is live at, at, at this number, uh, fellas. I really hate this game. And I mean, a big reason why is it's just the injury reporting this season has been just absolutely abysmal. And we saw it last last week with the Commanders Bears game. It looked like all week Jayden Daniels wasn't going to play. And then on Sunday, they announced that he's going to play. And, you know, Jordan Love said on Wednesday after practice, which he didn't practice, that it's very realistic that he could play. And if he's saying that on Wednesday, then you, you kind of have to assume that maybe he's going to play. The look ahead line on this game before the season was Packers minus one and a half. Now we're at three. So obviously, if he's does he doesn't gonna play, you're gonna see this line shoot up. If he does play, he's gonna see this, you're gonna see this line shoot down. But Josh Jacobs, Jair Alexander, three-fifths of the offensive line for the Packers didn't practice today either. So it's not just Jordan Love, it's you know, injuries to the rest of the team as well. And look at the other side of the ball. Jared Goff has an ankle injury. He didn't practice today. So I think you really have to monitor the injury report here. Now, for me personally, I, I'm i hoping that Jordan Love plays because Jordan Love hasn't looked great all year. And with him, you know, he could barely stand last week against the Jaguars. If he plays, I think I'm going to find myself on the Lions. I think you're going to get a deflated number. And I think the Lions that are number one power rated team in my system right now I, that's where I would be looking personally. But I mean, all of this depends on the injury report. All right. So you're laying off that game and I get it. A lot of uncertainty with the injuries. Now the bears Raheem. you mentioned last week, that game with Washington was like this great unknown going into the week because the Jaden Daniels injury news was very vague. He played. We know what happened. Epic all time loss, epic all time giddiness for our pal, Joe house. The Bears now go to the West Coast and take on an Arizona team that's feeling really good about themselves. They won a dramatic game against the Chargers, last second field goal. Miami, they're down double digits. They come back, last second field goal, go and win that game. Is your confidence in Chicago growing by the minute? You gave this out on Monday or you gave it out as a lean as a game you were identifying as a spot. Is this now a good buy low spot on the Bears because of what happened on Sunday in Washington? Yeah, give me the Bears. And I, I feel pretty confident about this. Like, so the Washington Commanders are top 10 in pressure rate. There's a lot of talk about how weak their defense was, but they're still top 10 in pressure rate. The Arizona Cardinals are 29th in pressure rate. So all the pressure that we saw on Caleb Williams last week, that's not going to be an issue this week at all. And I actually have the Bears power rated over the Cardinals in this matchup. And I think this line should be closer to three. Like, I think you should be getting, you know, the key number of three here if you want to back Arizona. And I just think these teams are completely different classes. Like, if you look at the Bears right now, you just you look at net EPA per play. The Bears are 18. The Cardinals are 24. Like, I, I don't understand this, this line. and you know, I think you're, you are getting a little bit of a discount based on what happened against the Commanders. I think the Commanders are a better team, a much, much better team than the Cardinals. So I think this is a step down in class. And I think House might have said this weeks ago, but the Bears are a team that you want to back against inferior competition. You want to stay, stay away against superior competition. Well, the Cardinals are an inferior team, and they they struggle to stop the run. DeAndre Swift should be able to get off. I think all that progress that you saw previous at Commanders game, you're going to see it here again. Give me the Bears. Yeah, I like what you're laying out there, uh, Dream. I just have to tell everybody, I have at, also added the Bears to the never bet list, a never bet policy on the Chicago Bears because that team rivals the Jets in terms of faulty, uh, ill-conceived decision-making at every level of decision-making. When inside the locker room, you have players on both sides of the ball questioning the approach and play calling of the coaching staff, it really tells you a lot. And I honestly think that this, this Bears team, I want them to suck down the stretch because when Mike Vrabel comes in and is hired as their head coach for next season, the group that he brings with him, I'm going to bet the Bears to win the Super Bowl. That is a very talented team on both sides of the ball that is unbelievably underserved by the 
trying to help them scheme. They had a bye week against Washington and ran one of the worst offensive game plans uh, imaginable. Their their number one star uh, draft pick had four completions with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter of the football game. It's diabolical how stupid that team is. I am going to play. It's a one. It sets up wonderfully. As long as Arizona is favored, I love the teaser leg. I'm Great willing to leg. indulge mm. the teaser oh, yeah. leg. I won't House. bet on the Bears though on the number. I won't do it. I'm glad that you brought up teaser legs. Aren't there so many great teaser legs yes. this week? I mean, mm. I'm going through the lines. Cincinnati getting them down to pick them. Buffalo getting them down to pick them. The Saints, uh, the Eagles. The- the Eagles are it's a wonderful. Great one. The, the Kansas, Kansas City, City Chiefs. Chiefs. Like, we're due, boys. We're due for a teaser week. But see, Hon- that's honestly, I think the opposite. Father, he needs to just release uh, a, a, su- a, a, a his four a super team super teaser because <laughs> he always hits them. But this is the perfect week. But that's what scares me about this week, guys, because there are so many games that fit into that obvious. Yeah, just take them to win. Yeah, let's take the seven or six and get it down to one or pick them. That leads me to believe with the public having some big weeks here, Raheem, and they have the last couple weeks that maybe this is a market correction reckoning week. I I smell a little buyer beware with the lines this week. Just my two cents. I think I agree with you. I I, I do think it's a very tough week. So well, because I mean, we'll have to see how it plays out. Us. It's the market correction to the market correction because teasers have been terrible all season long. Teasers have crushed everybody. The Wong teaser is, is is a dead loser through the first eight weeks of the season. Now's the time. Let's go get the market correction to the market correction and try and get some of these across. There will be some biting of the butt um, because you cho- chose the wrong team, the wrong the wrong leg. But, I, I mean, there's eight, seven or eight different opportunities. The one that's going to kill everybody is the Chiefs. Teasing the Chiefs right after on Monday Night Football, everybody's staring at it. They're 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 hosting Tampa, right? Uh, how can Tampa possibly slow down the 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 Hopkins edition? We're going to see Nuke finally on this great stage. We'll see Mahomes and Nuke. They're going to get it going. How could the Chiefs possibly blow it? That would be the leg, except for the Chiefs are are immaculate uh, and and rise above all else. So I'm going to be on teasers. I mean, I'm I'm just doing it, JJ. Fair enough. All right, we got a lot more to get to. We'll get to our favorite teams who have some interesting games this week. And I can tell you guys that I can't wait to bet one of your favorite teams. And I'll tell you exactly who that is when we come back right after this. All right, boys. I mentioned I'm betting one of your favorite teams this week. It's not mine. Oh, Raheem. (laughs) Oh, Raheem. (laughs) Whoa. Let's go, JJ. (laughs) There is a zigzag theory that I have with the Atlanta Falcons. They are the classic team that you want to zig with after a loss and you want to zag with after a win. I know this line has moved a couple of points. I understand all of the problems and all of the critiques with your Dallas Cowboys. They're fair. They're justified. But wouldn't it be so Cowboys and wouldn't it be so Falcons for the Cowboys to go in there and win the game outright? That's just the way I see this game, Raheem. I know you're probably going to say I'm crazy. I'm going with it. I like Dallas outright. I don't even need the points. I think they're beating the Falcons on Sunday. I do. You got bigger balls than me because I I don't have it. And the biggest reason why is because the Cowboys, they can't run the ball and they can't stop the run. You're talking about a team that's 31st in rushing success rate on defense. And they're 32nd in rushing EPA per play on defense. And what do the Atlanta Falcons do well? They run the ball. B. John Robinson is going to have a monster day. It's going to set up that play action for Kirk Cousins. And I think offensively, they should be able to get whatever they want. And I, I think when you look at this Cowboys team, yeah, like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were able to pass all over this Falcons team. But I'm not sure the Cowboys are going to be able to do that because they're just so one-dimensional. So it's just tough for me to back this Cowboys team. I think that the Falcons are by far the better team. And look, I understand. I mean, there is a little bit of fraudulence to this Falcons team. But I mean, this will probably be a one-score game down the stretch. But the Cowboys are the last team that I want to back at this point in time. I get it, House. I get it. I understand where Raheem's coming from here. But Atlanta, to me, profiles as one of these teams that just doesn't handle prosperity well. 
And I think the narrative around him is, hey, Kirk Cousins was brilliant. They're throwing it all over Tampa last week. They're about to go run and hide. They don't strike me as a team that's just comfortable in that position. And from a desperation angle, you can't have a more desperate Dallas Cowboy team going into this game. You can't. JJ, I'm 100% with you on this one. I think that it's a great uh, opportunity for, for Dallas here. Now, again, my preference for the week, I love Dallas teasing them from two and a half up to eight and a half because Dream just said it. This is going to be a one score game. That's what Atlanta plays against better teams. I don't know if I can call Dallas a good team, but the one aspect of this that has caught my eye and attention and why I think Dallas is live is the abysmal pass rush of the Atlanta Falcons. If you can't put any pressure on Dakota, Dakota can throw the rock. And we watched him pick apart that, that Pittsburgh Steelers uh, secondary, a Steelers defense that I think we all regard as a top five defense. We saw when, when the Steelers could not get home against him, he ate them up and we were watching guys named Tolbert and Turpin and uh, some other names that I'm not going to be able to pull off catching balls all over the ball field. Um, I think Dallas is, is definitely live in, in this spot. Uh, we ha- a big part of this uh, also will be obviously health. We've got to see the injury report. Is Deron Bland possibly going to be back? Will Mike Parsons be back? That will help guide the, the handicap a little bit, but I don't, I'm not ready to dismiss Dallas uh, in, in this one, fellas. Okay. House, your team. Historically, they've been terrible against the giants. Terrible. They beat them this year. They shouldn't have beat them. Remember, the Giants didn't have a kicker. This game's scary a little bit. Kami's only laying three and a hook. Um, I'm not going to bet it, and I'm not going to tell anybody to bet it. Uh, three and a half feels like too many just because of, of the history, but the, the, the Giants are so bad at home. Uh, Daniel Jones is so bad at home. I actually like Washington uh, on, on the money line. In previous years, really for the previous 25 years, this is the kind of spot that Washington would go lose a football game in after uh, a completely unexpected, dramatic victory the previous week. But I don't think that's this Washington team. And I don't think that's Dan Quinn. And I don't think that's Cliff Kingsbury. I think they're going to be prepared. And I think that Jane Daniels, he had a, a, a great running day against this Giants team early in the season. If he's if his ribs are, are better and we'll know by uh, an indication of how quick, how much he's running out of bounds. Um, I, I like the, the, the C words to handle their business this week. What do you stand on that one, Raheem giants live in the game or you think Washington easy. So the last time these two teams played the commanders won 21 to 18. And if you dig through the box score, the commanders were all of six in the red zone. And I know they had the same a very similar game against the Chicago Bears this week. You know, they could not score in the red zone. I don't think that's going to happen again here. I I, I really don't. So I would lean towards the commanders here. I think the commanders get it done. But I think this is a sneaky over. And, 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 you know, my model actually makes this going under. But I think you have to fade the model here. Um, The odds makers open this up at 44 and a half. I had this at 41 and a half. I think you're going to see some points in this game. So I think this is a really, really sneaky over. And I expect the commanders not to go all at six in the red zone. And then the Giants have a kicker. <laughs> so um, if you got 21-18 with 0-6 in the red zone and no kicker, I'm going to go 24-21 either way. Ooh, okay. Love Fair this. Enough. Love that. When we, when we come back, gentlemen, we wrap it up with a bang. Best bets week nine. We know House is throwing a teaser leg in. Mm. Uh, full disclosure, you want to tease anything, just put Buffalo in it. Please, just, just uh, thank me later. Just put Buffalo in it and go about your merry way. Uh, we'll give out best bets next. All right, let's walk it off with a bang. We're closing out week nine best bets. How's I'm giving you the tee box because I know you're going in a tease direction. So what would that tease be, uh, amigo? Well, I I am going to give out a tease. I like the Eagles at home down to one and a half against Jacksonville. And I like Cleveland up to seven and a half at home against the Chargers. But that's not my best bet. My best bet. And I really can't emphasize this enough. Everybody should be figuring out a way to capitalize on this Carolina Panthers team. This is a once in a lifetime 
opportunity. <laughs> I'm looking at the New Orleans Saints over 25 and a half as their team total. It's minus 118 right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. If you are missing out on gambling against the Carolina Panthers week in and week out, I don't know what you're doing out here. They're the worst defense in the NFL. They allow 34 points a game in the first half alone. They're averaging uh, uh, 22 points per game allowed. Um, get on the Saints. Derek Carr is supposed to be back. Chris Olave back. It's totally, we watched how they blew out this sorry Panthers team. You got to make some money gambling against uh, gambling on the football. The Panthers is the pathway, fellas. Hypothetical question. I mean, because I agree with that. How many points would the 0 and 16 Detroit Lions be favored over this Carolina Panthers team? <laughs> because this, I mean, this team is very, very three bad, and a half. So. Three and a half. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad at that at all. But um, I'm a, I'm gonna play the greatest hits. Um, you guys know I went with this last week. I'm gonna go with it again. I'm gonna go with the Baltimore Ravens, Denver Broncos over 45 and a half. You look at this Ravens team. Nobody can stop them. They're seven and one to the over this year. I mean, every single game, they're putting up 30 points. And, you know, even last week, we had that over on the, the Browns Ravens game. And, like, you got two red zone drives to start the game with three points, and it's still flying over. And you look at this Broncos team, yeah, you could say they had a, a, a good defense, but look who they've played in terms of offenses the last couple of weeks. You're talking about the Panthers, the Saints, the Chargers, the Raiders, and the Jets. Now you got to step up and in class and play Lamar Jackson with all these weapons. And you look at the fact that the, the Baltimore Ravens, they can't stop anybody on defense. This total is way too low. Let's go over 45 and a half. Let's go with another one. Let's go with the Los Angeles Rams. Minus one and a half. We discussed this on East Coast Bias last week. Not last week, Monday, about taking the Rams to make the postseason at plus 400. You could add to that. Let's take the Rams over seven and a half wins along with minus one and a half against the Seahawks this week. That's my two. Look at Raheem and I being on the same page here because I was about to go tell you, lay the one and a half. McVay has been great against Seattle throughout his career, and I just don't trust that Seattle defense whatsoever against McVay and what he's going to be able to do. So we are in lockstep agreement, Raheem. I am taking the Rams. Minus Family the play. Family play. Family. We're all here, baby. It's all but East Coast bias. I'm giving Family you play two. on the future. And family play on the side this week. Los Angeles Rams. Rams. I mean, we did this last year. I think we're playing the greatest hits because last year we had the Rams <laughs> to make the postseason as well. So we're going to keep it going. And I'm giving you a two-team teaser myself. I'm teasing Dallas up. I'm teasing Buffalo down. And I hope it goes down in flames thanks to the Buffalo Bills. But, again, Josh Allen has never lost at home to the Miami Dolphins. Don't see that changing come Sunday. Guys, that's going to do it for this East Coast Bias. The house, Raheem, JJ signing off. Good job by the boys, Stefan and Tucker. We'll see you Sunday for the Ringer Sunday pregame. Enjoy the football. Enjoy Halloween. Be good, everybody. <laughs>